fact, the Devil Sweeney told us this week he'd be starting in almost any other Division One program in the country. It's a tough pill to swallow when you go from being not only one of the best quarterbacks, but one of the best players in your recruiting class, to a guy that's just being clowned on social media week to week. And you have the spotlight following you throughout some of your high school and throughout your whole college career and you try to dim that by transferring to another school it just doesn't happen and to top it off it doesn't help that you have a high profile backups behind you that are putting a lot of pressure on you to perform well and that's kind of what has happened to florida state's quarterback dj yui Ungalale throughout his career and i know i might be late on the topic but i still want to discuss how he went from a future football star to a bust in just a couple of seasons uh, usa today national offensive player of the year as a junior then committed to clemson DJ DJU grew up in Bellflower, California, which is in the heart of LA. Growing up, DJU was bigger than most kids in his age group. Greg Biggins, a 2 for 7 analyst, said he first seen DJU in 7th grade in the 7v7 tournament, and he said DJU was about 6'3 and 225 pounds. And with his stature, there were some questions if he was going to be able to play quarterback in the future because by the time he was going to be a senior in high school, he was probably going to be about 6'6", 270, meaning that he's going to be better fit for a position like tight end or alignment position. DJU would then attend St. John Bosco's High School, which is one of the premier high schools for football. In recent years, you've had guys like Josh Rosen, Wyatt Davis, and Trent McDuffie attend St. John Bosco's High School, go on to college, and then get drafted to the NFL. But even before he got to St. John Bosco, he was already a star as he had a handful of offers in middle school, including two local schools in UCLA and USC. When DJU got to St. John Bosco, they already had a starting quarterback named Riyad Mitchell, who actually went on to play college as a quarterback. Mitchell will lead St. John Bosco to a CIEF state championship, but going into DJU's sophomore season is where the quarterback controversy will begin. And the plan for St. John Bosco's was really to rotate quarterbacks, but that was until Mitchell started struggling. And against DC powerhouse St. John's, St. John Bosco would actually be down 17-7, DJU would come in, throw two touchdowns, and win St. John Bosco's the game. Two weeks after that, Mitchell would leave the team and DJU would get his first start against California Powerhouse and High School Football Powerhouse Modern Day. DJU would perform really well, throwing for two touchdowns and 257 yards, and he would start for the rest of the season. And as much hype as DJU got as a football prospect, he also got a lot of hype as a baseball prospect because he was a guy that could throw over 90 miles per hour, and he's a guy that could hit balls out the park. And sometime before his junior season started, that's when he started taking unofficial visits to colleges like Clemson. Before he made a decision on what college he would go to, he would let his junior season play out and they would get the revenge against modern day in the regular season as they thrashed them 41 to 18 although they did see him again in the CIEF state championship where they lost on may 5th of 2019 dju would then commit to clemson and a couple months later his senior season would begin dju and st john bosco were running to bryce young and modern day once again in the regular season but this time it was number one versus number two modern day will once again get the win 42 to 38 and bryce young shine more than dju did this game they will once again see each other in the state championship game where modern day was up 28 to 5 and then st john bosco rallied in the second half winning the game 39 34 and dju threw over for 400 yards and five touchdowns now we move on to dju's college career where he played at clemson in his first two years in his first year there he really wasn't supposed to play much because they had trevor lawrence trevor lawrence at this time was viewed as the best quarterback prospect since andrew luck he just led clemson to back-to-back -back national championship appearances including one win he is viewed as the best quarterback in college football and a consensus number one pick and through the first couple games of the season we saw dju but it was basically in garbage time you know he got those snaps where he's barely gonna throw the ball and with the way trevor lawrence was playing it looked like it was gonna be that way throughout the season and not only was lawrence rolling clemson was rolling as well as they were ranked number one and it looked like they were primed just to get a college football playoff spot easy especially with how weird the 2020 season was but then going into week seven against boston college it was revealed that trevor lawrence was not going to be able to start that game because he had a virus it was revealed that he wasn't going to be able to start in the week eight game either but the most important game was the one in front of him against boston college so now dju got his first start against boston college and well he didn't disappoint he had 342 passing yards and two touchdowns and most importantly clemson and dju got a win but the next week they had to look forward to notre dame and we all know notre dame wins at boston college especially not this season as they were the number four team going into this game notre dame had one of the best defenses in the country and most importantly the game was in south bend so you know it was going to be in a hostile environment and if clemson wins this game they solidified herself for the playoff spot and this game was not only important to clemson but important to dju as this was now his time to shut up any doubt after that Boston College game to prove that he was going to take the reins at the quarterback position after Trevor Lawrence. And any doubters DJU had going into this game, 
he shut them all up because he outperformed Ian Book, the Notre Dame War veteran, as DJU had 439 yards and two touchdowns in this game. And this was actually impressive because if you pay attention, the run game could not get going for Clemson. Clemson had just 33 rush attempts for 34 yards, compared to Notre Dame's 40 rush attempts for over 200 yards, and it makes DJU's stat for this game look way more impressive. Although DJU and Clemson played really well, they came up short as Notre Dame won the game. And now since they lost to Notre Dame, they would have to win out in and win the conference championship to even make the college football playoffs. But DJU wouldn't start any more games for this season because Trevor Lawrence would end up coming back. Even after Trevor Lawrence came back, DJU would see some action in some games, but the action was meaningless. Uwe Angola would play in 10 games this season, but only start those two games and throw for over 900 yards and five touchdowns. After Clemson's season ended in the Sugar Bowl to Ohio State, Trevor Lawrence would then move on to the draft, where he'll be picked number one, leaving DJU to be the starting quarterback of Clemson. And those two games that he started, that little small sample size was all Clemson and college football fans needed to think that he was going to be the next great Clemson quarterback. Fans thought that he was going to follow in the steps of Taj Boyd, Deshaun Watson, and Trevor Lawrence, and well, you really couldn't blame him. DJU was one of the top prospects coming out of high school, and as a true freshman, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe against the number four team in the nation and gave them 400 yards passing and two touchdowns passing. So all the hype that DJU was getting before the 2021 season started was justified. But before everybody fully buys into the hype, everybody wanted to see what he did against Georgia. This was supposed to be a great test for DJU and Clemson because Georgia was not only one of the best teams in the nation, but they had one of the best defenses in the nation as well. And in this game, DJU kind of struggled. He had 178 passing yards for one interception and no touchdowns. But this wasn't a great offensive game by any means as Georgia won the game 10 to three. But little did we know, that game was going to be a telling story of how the season was going to go for Clemson and DJU. Yu Young Lele struggled in his first season starting, throwing for 2,246 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions. Now this wasn't the same Clemson teams to pass, their offensive line was pretty weak, the defensive line wasn't all that great, and the wide receivers weren't all that great. And the difference between Uwe Ungalale and Watson and Trevor Lawrence was just night and day. And Uwe Ungalale had even more pressure going into the 2022 season because they were bringing in the number one quarterback and Kay Klubnik. And most people thought this was going to be Kelly Bryant versus Trevor Lawrence 2.0 where Kelly Brown was the starter from the previous season, but Trevor Lawrence was the hot shot coming in. But the Uyunglele and Klubnik situation was not the Bryant and Lawrence situation, as Uyunglele started the whole season up until the ACC Championship game, where in the second series, he was benched for Klubnik. That benching would end DJU's tenure in Death Valley, and then he would decide to transfer to Oregon State. And this seemed like a good move for DJU because Oregon State wasn't in the limelight like Clemson. Also, Oregon State had good running backs, so all they needed was like a game manager quarterback. That's really what he was at Oregon State. He had 2,600 yards, 21 touchdowns, and seven interceptions, pretty similar to his last season with Clemson. After spending a season with the Beavers, he would then transfer to Florida State. Hindsight, it doesn't seem like a good move. Why? Because Florida State, just like Clemson, is a big time program. Not only that, last season they went undefeated and you could argue that they should have made the college football playoffs. Transferring to FSU only put big expectations and the light back on DJU and it wasn't good. So far this season, DJU has thrown for over a thousand yards, four touchdowns and six interceptions. And as a starter for Florida State, he is one in four and Florida State offense has really struggled. Now it's not all DJU's fault, he doesn't have the weapons that FSU had last year, the offensive line isn't as good as it was last year, the defense isn't as good as it was last year, this team is just a regression from last season. But we all know when you're the quarterback and things going bad, lots of the blame is going to fall on you. And right now DJU is out with a hand injury and he's been out for multiple weeks. And I'm not too sure when he does return that he'll even be the starter. But hopefully everything goes well when he does return because I really want him to do good. But that's all for this video and until next time, I'm out. Peace.